Hey everyone, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Another episode of the Weekend Recap. I want to thank you guys all for being here. And had a pretty decent haul this weekend. A uh, good bit of vintage toys. Not so much baseball cards. Virtually no baseball cards at all. All toys, but uh, some very vintage toys from the 60s in this lot. All the way up to the 80s. And even some newer stuff too as well. Newer novelty items. But we're going to do what we usually do every Sunday night. We're going to check out everything I've picked up over the last couple days. And then tonight, we're doing a free break. I've been saying I want to do a free break of 89 Don Russ for a few weeks now. So we're finally doing that. And we have four participants that were chosen um, to partake in that free break. And that's courtesy of Dan Schultz, close friend of the channel. Not sure if he's in here tonight, but uh, made possible by him. He sent me four boxes of 89 Don Russ. Very awesome. I mean, he always sends a great wax boxes for FMF, so we're going give, to uh, give back to you guys, do a free break tonight on this one. Chris Bolton, happy birthday to you, man, and thank you guys all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, starting off with some stuff I picked up actually this afternoon. Very stoked about this one. You guys that know me and uh, watch the channel know that I love the real Ghostbusters. Um, my favorite toy line of all time, and probably my favorite cartoon of my childhood and even today. Uh, from the 80s and early 90s. This is a pickup from my buddy, uh, Nathaniel. He's actually a tattoo artist in Pittsburgh. I've known Nathaniel for 20-some years. He started collecting RGB a few years back, and uh, he actually beat me out for this on Instagram like probably a year and a half, two years ago. He got it for 25 bucks, which is a crazy deal. There's an original RGB handheld uh, game from Remco. These are super hard to come by on the card, but he decided he was going to part with it today, so I picked this one up off him earlier and also is already in a Zolo case that fits perfectly. Zolo cases are top notch, top of the line stuff to, to protect uh, your figures and other stuff too. Like this fits in here perfectly. So really excited to have that in my RGB collection. Um, and I can't wait to hang that on the wall as well with everything else. And then the other thing I picked up from Nathaniel was, some of you guys might remember this. We've seen this a couple of times in um, the Wish books that I've gone over, the late 80s Wish books. Uh, the real ghost was a summer mate in the original packaging as well. Been wanting this for quite a while. Nathaniel also hooked me up with that too. So perfect, pristine condition. Like it uh, just came off the shelf today. Really awesome. Stood on that from the late 80s. So that also got my RGB collection. Very excited to finally have that one. So those, uh, those two were the first pickups from today. And uh, yesterday I didn't go out anywhere. Friday I actually, I have a couple ads on Facebook Marketplace trying to buy wax boxes from people and baseball cards in general and toys as well. And I had a local guy hit me up and say, hey, do you want some of these sets? They're all junk wax era sets. Wasn't interested. And he's like, well, I have some toys too. I have some GI Joes. I was like, I'll check out what you have. And they sent me some pictures and I was like, holy crap. So um, got a nice uh, little GI Joe haul from this local guy who was really nice named Rick. Um, some of you guys might recognize that in the back from your childhoods. If you're um, old enough, the G.I. Joe Desert Patrol Attack Jeep is from 1967 in the original box. Got that and uh, several figures and the uh, Foot Locker storage box for 100 bucks, which is insane. The G.I. Joe Desert Patrol Attack Jeep by itself with the box, they sell for upwards of 400 bucks just by itself. So... Um, that and the figures and the storage box for a hundred bucks was a really good deal that I could not pass on. So I was pretty stoked about that. We'll check that out in a second. This one's pretty cool. I was a big Alvin and the Chipmunks fan when I was a little kid. Uh, this is from 1984. This is a pickup today. Eric and I went out to Dubois and it kind of sucked because we went the whole way out there and the flea market wasn't even open. There was no one there at all. I'm not really sure why they were supposed to be open. They were advertising like 400 vendors, I think, with like 700 vendor spots. And it's like a two-hour drive almost, and we get out there, and it's literally desolate. There's no one there at all. We're like, wow, this sucks. So we went down the road to another flea market. I think it was like Leaper, uh, something like that. There was like a few tents set up. Didn't really have any luck, but I did come across this uh, Alvin and Chipmunks figure for Uncle Harry for a buck. So the uh, card's kind of beat up. The bubble's kind of detached here and kind of taped back on, stabled and yellowing, but still for a buck for a 1984 figure from a cartoon that I loved. When I was a kid, I couldn't walk away from that. So kind of a cool find there for the most part. If some of you guys remember having the chipmunks from your early years. So that was uh, one of the only things that I found today, unfortunately. It was a 
pretty bad day uh, overall. I did buy a case of Pinnacle inside as well. I know you guys might have saw Eric's um, recent break he did on like, I think he opened like 10 cans, but I actually got an entire case of these uh, earlier. So some point in the future, I might do a break on those. I think there's like 48 cans. It'll be dirt cheap to partake in the break, but kind of interesting. 10 cards inside of a can. Um, the ones that he took out of his were all in good condition, believe it or not. So uh, I never really got into these because this was like kind of at the end of my collecting days. I think I bought a couple of these when I was younger, but uh, that'd be kind of cool to check those out. I think there's 48 cans in the case. So I don't know. We'll probably do a break on those for like a dollar a piece plus shipping or something like that in the future. Maybe try to pull some inserts or good, or good stuff. This is somebody that, uh, this is one that was actually in the candy cane that I got um, from last weekend, I just decided to pull it out to show you guys. But that same exact year, it's Pinnacle 98, Pinnacle Inside, or what they're called. The box is too big for me to show you guys. It's a huge, huge case. Hey, Incredible CJ Collectibles, thanks for stopping by. And thank you, Joe Mansman and Jason Wendell, everybody else I'm seeing on the stream. Sorry, I'm kind of missing over your comments here. But I um, appreciate you guys for being here tonight, checking out everything and hanging out. So we'll do that at some point in the future. Today, my girlfriend, Brittany, who is in here as well, Picked up some stuff for me at Cracker Barrel, believe it or not. Cracker Barrel has Ghostbuster novelty stuff, newer stuff. Um, I've never seen these in person yet, but Slimer, obviously, the green apple gummy ghost. I think she bought her grandpap a Cracker Barrel gift card, and he, like, wasn't having it and gave it back to her. So she's like, all right, well, I'll just go buy John some Ghostbuster stuff in, like, their gift shop. So kind of cool. I'm not going to eat these, but uh, I will keep them. Eventually, they'll probably have mold on them and everything else, like my other real Ghostbusters toys. <laughs> but that's a green one, green uh, green gummy. And then I guess this is, I don't know if it's like one big piece of marshmallow or what, but the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, uh, looking angry as ever. Uh, pure sugary delight here. <laughs> also from Cracker Barrel, Ghostbusters Classic. I'll keep that as well in the packaging. And then the um, iconic No Ghost logo here, Moogly Ghost Marshmallow Pop which I'm not a big marshmallow fan to begin with. I don't like peeps, so I can't imagine that I would like this, but I'll keep it. So very cool, my girlfriend to pick those up for me on the road today. So that's that. And moving right along to some of the G.I. Joe stuff. I know there's some G.I. Joe fans out there. These are from the Hall of Fame G.I. Joe series, 1991, 1992. These were part of that small collection I bought. These are all sealed in the original boxes. Distro 13 Cobra is in here. It says, yo, Joe. He's a big Joe fan himself. But uh, some of these are talking ones, but they are not working anymore. But uh, still really cool pickups regardless. There's Flint. I definitely had some of these when I was younger, the 12-inch figures. And we have some more displayed on the back here. But uh, very cool. Made by Hasbro, 91 and 92. That's the first one. Here's the ones that are supposed to actually talk. Cobra Commander, always like Cobra Commander. These ones are actually still sealed as well. Have the official seal there, collector's edition here. Very cool, with all the accessories and everything else. And as you can tell, there is no activity here when you push a button. I forget which one I had when I was younger, I can't remember, but uh, it definitely did work at one point. Made machine gun sounds and whatnot. Pretty sweet, was definitely a big G.I. Joe fan uh, in my early years. And I know Eric was too. We used to watch it all the time early 80s or late 80s i should say for the most part i was born in 84 and here's duke this is the last one from that collection also no activity here from duke but sounds like there's activity there but it's just a plastic crunching but uh pretty cool nice little collection here so those three and then the uh the jeep uh, the attack jeep was the sweetest thing there. like i said those still sell regularly for like between three and four hundred bucks which is crazy so to get everything for 100 is pretty sick. And I got this from Rick. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Rick Noon or Rick No One. But uh, he wrote his name on here as a kid. This is, this is from 1964. This is a storage locker or foot locker there they're called. Um, but storage locker, it's missing the decal. There's supposed to be a decal here. You can see there's some glue print. Um, you could probably go on eBay and buy one of those for like five bucks or print one out yourself. There's some figures in here as well. This one's arm got cracked off. But these are very old from the 60s. Um, the original accessories, everything else. Very cool stuff. I didn't own too many of these when I was younger. I think I had like one or two of them, but uh, kind of cool. The 
storage box by itself you sell for about 20 to 30 bucks but uh the accessories you can get to a decent amount of money for those depending on what they are life vest and different wardrobes machine guns there's a machete in here a lot of cool stuff uh helmet pretty cool helmet i thought that was pretty sweet he threw that in as well so couldn't go wrong with that rick very cool dude and before we start the live, uh, the free break, let's check this out too. Some of you guys might remember this, and everything is collapsing here. Um, the GI Joe Desert Patrol Attack Jeep. This thing is sick, and it's in great condition too. We'll pull it out of the box, show it to you guys, and then we will go on to the free break. It's pretty big too. I didn't realize how big this thing really was, but. It's in really good condition for being from 1967 this was released. And uh, still has the turret, everything else. Um, I want to say the one figure in there goes with this also. But uh, very, very cool piece here. G.I. Joe history. Turret's back here. Um, very awesome stuff. I like this a lot. But yeah, 100 bucks for all of that. And in uh, very, very nice pristine condition here. So, I wanted to show that for you guys. Let me move that off to the side before it comes crashing down and everything. So, like I said, not a whole lot this weekend. I didn't even go out yesterday. Um, and today I kind of struck out real bad. But, um, I want to open some packs like I always like to do on Weekend Recap. I didn't come across any packs at all whatsoever. But, we'll rip some 89 Don Russ for you guys. We haven't broke a box of these in a couple months. I think last time we did, we found at least one in Griffey. So, we'll tear into those. And like I said, the only thing you need to do to enter this, uh, this, I don't know, kind of like giveaway or break, um, was comment on the community tab and send me an email with your shipping info. And the first four people that did that, I had a lot of responses, so obviously couldn't choose everyone uh, to be picked. But the first four people that sent me an email with their shipping info uh, entered, were entered in the break. MTS Sports Cards, what's up? So I just watched the, the first Indiana Jones on Saturday, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I love that movie. Um, Jake M, you were the first person to comment and email me. I know you're in here. I saw you in here a little bit ago. Dale T, um, actually just became a Patreon patron today. So thank you for that. Very, uh, really appreciate that. Second person to email me and, uh, give me your shipping info. Pat C and Shane B were the first four people to comment and email me. And you guys are into the break. And $10 super chat, Bill Sites that says, Hey John, hope you've been feeling better. Thank you very much, Bill Sites. Really appreciate that. I hope the same for you as well. Um, haven't seen you in a while, so I'm glad to see you back and hope you're doing good too, man. Really appreciate that super chat, Bill. Welcome back. So we're gonna do uh, rip these open now, and I figured it'd be the easiest way to do it. Instead of just doing it by stacks, I'm gonna just do, I mean, there's obviously four stacks and nine packs in here, 36 packs in the box. I'm just gonna take one of each. So we'll start out with Jake M. The first person to um, participate, so four packs, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that way I feel like everything is equally distributed and it's not just like one stack down the side. But I'll try to pull some Griffies, the best cards in here. Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, obviously the being the best, the rated rookie card, the iconic card. Uh, Craig Biggio rookie card, John Smoltz, Kurt Schilling are the main ones in here so a few hall of fame rookie cards but the uh kirby jr is definitely the best one so we'll start out here with jake m all these packs will may take you back to your childhoods here a lot of people hate these cards i still like them after all these years tom glavin's a hall of famer it's actually his second year card so open for a griffey for you I got PSA 10 Griffey 89 Don Ross. It was like I don't know, around 100 bucks, I believe. Somewhere around there. And yeah, Randy Johnson too. Jason Winto. I forgot all about the big unit. Uh, Tony Gwynn MVP card. Old oil can Boyd. Brady Anderson. That's actually his rookie card. That had a little bit of value to it back in the day. Paul L says these are my favorite junk wax cards. <laughs> Tops Kids is my least favorite. Oh, I am well aware of that, man. The Tops kids. Yeah, this set is awesome. A lot of good rookies in here. Not uh, too much value to them. Unslabbed, but uh, 
still definitely a cool part of our childhoods and uh, some nice Hall of Famers as well. A $5 super chat from Autistic Family Collectibles. That's our good friend Jonathan H. It says, dang, already know the answer to my Terrible Decision Tuesday video for next week. I'm doing 89 Don Russ too. Terrible decision since you are right now. Thanks so much, man. That is hysterical. <laughs> Let me make sure I didn't miss something here. I think I missed a... Uh, I missed a super chat a while back. I'm sorry, you guys. Give me one second here. I missed a $5 one from somebody. Bear with me here. It was a while ago. A $4.99 super chat from Joseph C. Says, John, when will you add more Patreon tiers? Will you send Patreons your used bath water like other YouTubers asking for a friend? <laughs> Thanks so much, Joseph C. I guess if you request used bath water, um, maybe I can make that happen for you. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna uh, bring out uh, new Patreon tiers September 1st. That's what I'm shooting for. I had somebody else asked me that today too. Lee Smith, Robin Yount, two Hall of Famers. Puckett, also another Hall of Famer. And Fisk, so Hall of Fame pack here. Starting off for Jake Am in his third pack. Andy Van Slyke, my brother's favorite player when we were younger. Yeah, September 1st, I'm going to bring out new ones with packs and single cards and everything else. Um, I've been slacking on that. Like I said, I've been very unmotivated to do anything productive with my uh, headache situation, but I'm trying to get that under wraps. Tom Gordon rookie card. Still a half-decent one there. And Bobby Bo. <laughs> Joe Yankee says, I think the mailman character should perform at birthday parties at bar, mit bar mitzvahs. That would definitely be an interesting sight to see him interacting with people in the real world. <laughs> I'd, I'd hire you. Well, thank you very much, man. I'm glad that uh, somebody can appreciate that annoying, pesky mailman. Randy Johnson rookie card. Nice. So one of the first ones we're looking for, the very last card in the pack for Jake M. You have a Randy Johnson coming your way, and this one is pretty nice. A um, little off from top to bottom, but uh, centering them from left to right is not too bad. But very nice Randy Johnson ready rookie card there. Hall of Famer Randy Johnson. Nice one there. First rookie we're looking for. Randy Johnson. And we have three packs left. Moving right along here. Then we can pull a Griffey. Jane Moyer on the back here. Jane Moyer, nice long career. Tom Gordon, Ray rookie card again. Will we find a Griffey? I know people have ripped through these boxes and not found a Griffey, so you never know. Seeing some doubles here at Body Boat Checklist, Jane Moyer. But at least a Randy Johnson rookie is heading your way, Jake. Like I said, these are courtesy of Dan Schultz. Amazing guy. Thank you again, Dan. I don't think he's in here right now. Eddie Murray, nice Hall of Famer. And Eckersley as well. This was a hot card back in 89. Sandy Almar Jr., definitely a very hot card. Mark McGuire, his Big Mac. Joe Carter. And we have one more pack left for Jake M., And I should be get, sending out the uh, the last of the FMF responses tomorrow. I know I, I'm, I'm backed up on those by like a couple weeks. So I'll be getting hopefully everything else out to you guys tomorrow. Will Clark MVP card. We're going to find a Griffey in here. Felix for men. always hated him. And Ken Kennedy's second year card. Rest in peace to Ken Kennedy. Is the final card. Not too bad of a stack there for Jake M., Randy Johnson, rookie, and a bunch of Hall of Famers. So off to a decent start so far. Could be uh, worse. We could have not found any rookies so far. And we'll move on to Dale T, who was the second person up. What do we have here? I lost count. One more. Nine. Del T is up with his nine packs. Starting it off. Good luck to everybody in here. There's a nice Kyle Ripken. Have not seen him yet. Paul L says, Paul, a pack full of Al Padrique coming up. Al Padrique is definitely in here. I want to say his rookie year is 88. Barry Larkin is a Hall of Famer. Nice one. Andrew Barrow Almar, second year card. Greg Harris, Ray Rookie. 
Two to our super chat from Autistic Family Collectibles is I have ripped two boxes and 12 rack packs and no Griffey. Jeez, that is some bad luck. Thank you very much for that uh, super chat. Please check out Autistic Family Collectibles. Very awesome channel, very awesome guy. Tons of cool videos. Pete Harnish, great rookie card. Hal Morris, game face on there. And then um, Tuesday, the people have spoken, and we are going to be breaking 82 Don Russ. It was a very, very close neck-and-neck -neck race between 2006 Tops and uh, 82 Don Russ. 82 Don Russ came out on top by a hair. Bunch of doubles here. Wally Joyner. Craig Biggio rookie card. Nice. There is the Craig Biggio. Second one we're looking for. And this one is pretty uh, pretty hot, too. Centering on that is very good from a uh, quick glance. Nice one there. Craig Biggio is a Hall of Famer. Nice card. Craig Biggio rookie going to Dale T. Not sure if you had that one or not. I feel like a lot of people have most of these rookie cards in their PCs, but... I guess there's a lot of people that uh, picked the Holly back up again and started collecting and uh, don't have some of these yet in their collection. Tom Gordon, red rookie card again. Luckily, it's not his evil twin, Don Gordon, who we kept seeing in 89 Bowman a while back. Bobby Bo is becoming a new bad omen. We've seen like four of that Diamond Kings card so far. I know Autistic Family Collectibles, he also did 89 Upper Deck too and didn't pull the uh, Griffey. I never have either. I always wanted to. Ozzy Smith. I pulled him out of the Don Russ several times, but uh, not out of the upper deck. Tim Raines, Jose Canseco. A lot of Canseco fans out here. Mattingly and Boggs. This is a pretty good pack. And four more left for Dale T. Jason Wentos is going to end up with 15 Flash Gordons at the end. <laughs> hey, Chris Cards. So we found the Biggio. We found the Randy Johnson. And look who it is. <laughs> Chris Ava on the Rex Specs. Diamond Kings card. I know we were all waiting for that one. Chris Weaver says one touch it. Hey, Chad Hopkins. Yeah, the puzzle piece is worn spawn. Or the puzzle is worn spawn. I want to say I put one of those together not too long ago. Those Rex Specs will forever haunt you. So we're still looking for Schilling, Smoltz, and most importantly, Ken Griffey Jr. Love that card. You should pick up the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. I don't know. If you're lucky, you can find it in dollar bins. Like I think I found a few. I found probably three or four dollar bins in uh, there's Jim Rice at the National. They're not always in the best condition, though. It's usually white corners. Very faint. I thought that was Smoltz for a second. This card looks exactly like that. Very close to it in a darkened stadium. Last pack for Dale T. Barry Bonds on the back. Could that be a good omen? Could that lead way to a Griffey? Ryan Sandberg. Mike Greenwell. It's from a Griff. From a Griff. Should be in the Hall of Fame, in my personal opinion. Gary Carter is in the Hall of Fame. Palmiro. Dale Murphy, and there's the Bonds. It's a nice stack. The Biggio rookie and some Hall of Famers. So far, so good, but no Griffey. I think he will surface, though. I hope he will, at least. Up next, Pat C. Made it into the break. Chris Weaver says congrats on that Sabo Diamond King's tail. And two dollars super chat from Chad Hopkins. It says I had a dream about a Buck Auto Ball, Jonathan H. Thank you very much, Chad Hopkins. Do you have a uh, a Buck Showwater autograph ball in your in your PC? I can't remember if you said you did or not. Chad Hopkins is always looking for Buck Showwater stuff memorabilia. No problem, Dale. Hopefully you like your stack. Some decent cards in there. Hey, Michael. Let's get a Griffey here. How about it? Two dollar super chat from Autistic Family Collectibles says he does now after the last night. Thanks, man. 
Mark Gray, second year card. There's Will the Thrill Clark. And Griffey Lists. Will we find him in here? Joseph sees the rainbow colored baseball in the box. Screams 89 for sure. <laughs> Definitely does. Jason Wendell says Gilkey. I want to say Gilkey, his rookie year is 1990, I believe. Or 91. I can't remember which one it is. I'm not pulling his Bowman rookie card, but I can't remember if it was 90 or 91. Cam and Eddie, second year again. There's that Tom Gordon. Tom Gordon is another omen here. That's like the fifth one we've seen so far on this break. Let's do maybe some more free breaks in the future. Some different stuff here. Tom Hankey looking terribly nerdy on that one. So he just let go of an AV club meeting. Nice Greg Maddox. Ray T says, can't get enough Tom Gordon. Flash Gordon karma. Big thanks says, is a Griffey worth anything these days? It all depends. I mean, book value on a Griffey is like eight bucks, but I don't know. A lot of times, junk wax error cards, if you're looking for value, you got to get them graded and you have to get a high grade. So I was saying earlier, I think the, like, the PSA 1089 Don Russ Griffey is like, I don't know, around 100 bucks, something like that. And a two dollar super chat from Chad Hopkins says, Epic Night on Jonathan H. FMF. John, check it out. Thank you very much, Chad Hopkins. I definitely, um, was in there for a few minutes and then I was busy doing something else so I didn't get a chance to catch the rest of it I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch it though the SMS there's a Henderson Jack Morris a couple of Hall of Famers and uh, Dawson as well some nerdy looking guys there <laughs> oh no John H says if anybody gets Dan Quisenberry John Jabs would love it actually never mind scratch it out he would love it you get any Dan Quisenberry, send them right to Jonathan H. He absolutely loves them. And if you happen to get a Bernard Gilkey jersey, send it right back to him. <laughs> There's Biggio rookie card again. Nice. Pat C, you got a Biggio rookie heading your way. Not a nice one. And uh, this one's nicely centered, too. So uh, I actually saw this on a rack pack the other day. Um, he was on top of the rack pack at a flea market at Rogers, Ohio, last Friday. Last Friday and... Um, I was like, what do you want for that? Thinking the guy would be like a buck or whatever. And he's like, yeah, it's like, I can do five bucks on that. That card usually sells for about five to seven bucks. Like, are you serious, man? Like, no, it doesn't. Book value on the Biggio is like four bucks, I believe. But, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you how, how many of those Biggio rookie cards I've bought in, out of boxes at flea markets for like a quarter. Still an awesome card. I mean, we have good luck, I guess, with flea markets around here finding... Uh, rookies and whatnot out of quarter boxes I guess it's not so easy everywhere else from what I hear Will Clark again yeah John H says PSA 10 bees you might be five bucks yeah for real but it was on top of the rack packs I was like that's cool I'd buy that for a buck just to have it and he was like yeah I gotta get five bucks for that and he's like Daryl Strawberries on top of this one I actually did a video about it um, this guy sells nothing but junk wax in Rogers, Ohio, like some absolute garbage. And he just asked for crazy prices for stuff. And I was hoping to get some stuff just to rip open and have fun with. Felix Jose, is it going to lead way to Griffey? Ripkin MVP, nothing in the last pack of Patsy. We move on to the final spot of the break. But, um, yeah, he was like hyping. I made a video about it. Um, the video is kind of shaky though, so I didn't release it. I don't know if I ever will or not, but, um, it's pretty comical though. I, I like one of you guys to see the video and share it with you because of how much this guy is hyping up these crap packs from the nineties. Just like talking them up like, yeah, that rack pack is going to be like seven bucks as Daryl strawberries on top of it. And that Daryl strawberry is a five cent card. Like that should not be seven bucks, man. So the final one, Shane B is up. We find a Griffey in here. Two, four, six, nine. The last nine packs. 
hype is here. It says in my videos, I find at least one guy who thinks a set of sport flicks is worth a hundred bucks. <laughs> so true, so true. You definitely have those people everywhere you go. Uh, we don't have them as, as much around here. I'm trying to think if we saw anything ridiculous today in our travels. Um, hey, Triple C. But yeah, you got Daryl Strawberry on top of here. So that's going to be seven bucks for an 89 Don Russ rack pack because Daryl Strawberry's on top. It's like, get out of here, man. And there's somebody else there who's selling 90 Tops rack packs. It wasn't even a full box. I, don't, I forget how many were in there, but he wanted 60 bucks for it. And he's had them sitting out for, I think, like three months now, and no one's bought them. So I give you, like, I don't know, 20 or 25 bucks for those if you want to get rid of them. I don't think you can find a no name on front Thomas in uh, rack packs, though. I'm pretty sure that's only can be pulled out of, like, jumbo rack packs. Conseco 4040 Club. Hype is here, says, rule of hunting cards, if it's in an antique mall, it's automatically 10 times more than the actual value. That's so true, man. That's what kind of sucks is that I'm, I'm, like, upset that flea market season is coming to an end because then you're stuck with freaking antique malls. And antique malls, it's tough to get good deals in there. Everyone, I feel like everyone that sets up in antique malls, they all have access to eBay. So you're going to be paying eBay prices no matter what. And I don't, like, I don't really like doing that. If I don't buy stuff off eBay, I just buy it right off, right off freaking eBay and just have it shipped to my door. You know what I mean? Like, I want to feel like I'm actually getting a decent deal when I buy stuff, especially cards or toys. That's part of the fun of it is, like, finding a good a good deal. I see that so often. It's just freaking eBay prices or even more than that. I get they, they got to pay for their stand there, but uh, I don't know. I see that way too much, I guess. Very final stack here. Shane B., Alex Sanchez. So we're seeing a different raid, raid rookie card here. Could Griffey be in here? I hope so. Joseph sees his people who aren't collectors think because these cards are decades old, they're worth money. I've crushed the dreams of so many people when they have a collection they want me to look at. I've definitely done the same exact thing, too. And that's, that's very, very true. There was, like, some lady I saw on a Facebook marketplace. I'm always on there looking for, like, cards and toys. I saw some lady that was, uh, I want to say she had, like, the 89 top set. I don't even know if it was factory sealed. But she was like, can anyone tell me how much this is worth? There he is again. There is no escape. <laughs> there is no escape. If you're looking through 89 cards, you are going to see a lot of him. <laughs> Chris Luberson, congrats, Shane B. You got the Savo. But, um, yeah, I was like 89 top set. And, yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, I didn't think anyone else reached out to her. I wanted her to actually know, like, how much it was worth. Was like, hey, you know, that set's like, Five bucks, you know, maybe you'll get ten for it at the most, but that's it. I think she was like really upset about it. Her response was very, very sad. <sighs> yeah, I just wanted to be a good Samaritan and uh, help you out, so you didn't think that you had a two hundred dollar set on your hands, because it's not. Chris Carpenter rated rookie card. David Cohn. So hoping we find a Griffey, but you heard Jonathan H. He's opened a few boxes of these and rack packs, never found it. I want to say the last box I opened, we definitely did find uh, one of it. I want to say Chris Weaver actually got it out of the last one we did. Ozzy Smith MVP. Outlighter, second year. And Luis Medina. MCS says, I wish I had some Sabo signed Rex Specs. <laughs> Paul L., my friend was disappointed when I told him an 87 top set seals were 20 the most. Yeah. Yeah, so people get pretty upset about that. Hey, Vesture. Jason Wentos says Griffey is in every other box, and this is not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. That's probably the least hideous card I've ever seen of him, though. He's not making, like, an awful face. He's got some, like, shades on there. Maybe I don't like... Maybe I, like... I don't know. A new respect for Eric Plunk. I've ever seen that card. There's the Daryl Strawberry card that the guy I was hyping up at the flea market saying it was seven bucks for a rack pack because this car was on top. <laughs> so Shane V, you got a seven dollar card right there, according to some guy in Ohio. <laughs> Jonathan, a seven dollar strawberry. There it is. Get that slabbed immediately. Make it seventy dollars. PSA ten. Is that creepy Tom Hankey card again? Come on. Maddox, second year, or third year, I mean. Blue Surfer says, I knew a guy that worked for a card shop that would search packs and reseal them the years they came out. 
They had an ironing board with, ste with a, and a steamer in the back, and I saw it myself. That's awful, man. I feel like I definitely dealt with people like that before as well. And there's Sean Tiford says, John, you have some Griffey rookies in a box coming up. Please send one to each of the break participants. There are more than enough. Well, thank you very much, Sean Tiford. That's very, very generous of you, man. Very generous. Um, you guys may have seen the FMF from two weeks ago. Sean Tiford sent us a box full of goodies. And I have a few more I need to slash open yet. So definitely keep that in mind and send these out. I'm probably going to make a video about each one of those, I think. Tom Gordon again. Sean definitely is the man. Sent us a massive collection. I'm trying to like kind of get my uh, area cleaned up first. If you guys would see my the area that I'm in right now, you would probably be like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, are there raccoons living in there? There's literally just crap everywhere. Just boxes of cards, toys, singles, just crap everywhere. So I need to get this room cleaned up sometime soon. Final pack for Shane B. I hope we find the Griffey in here, man. Last pack, magic. There is that Bobby Bow again. Two Bobby Bows in a pack. Win. Cameron Drew, why can't you be Kangaroo Jr., man? Come on. No Griffey in that box. Bill Seitz says, look like Don Ross puts Sheet C in this box. Very well could be. No Griffey, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you strike out, but uh, you guys heard what Sean Tiford said. He sent me a bunch of Griffeys, I guess, and I'll send them on to you guys. But uh, still fun to rip through those anyways and check out uh, cards from our childhoods. Even if you don't pull the best card in the set. We still got two Biggios and Randy Johnson. No sign of Smoltz or Schilling, though. It's kind of weird. But um, still fun overall. That's all I have for you guys tonight. I really would appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Maybe tomorrow night we will do one of those mystery boxes with Sean Tiford and check out uh, the second box of um, what he sent us. Or, or Gary Sheffield was also not in there as well. I forgot about Sheffield, too. Good point, Paul L. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow or the next day. Have a great weekend, or rest of your weekend, I should say.